today I want to talk about the rib cage. Um, so it's a very common thing in our culture to talk about having good posture and particularly sitting up straight, standing up straight, which tends to involve something like lifting the chest up, pulling the shoulders back. And this actually comes, I mean, there's a number of different places it comes from. One is actually because kind of more of a military stance. It's, uh, and another might be from dance and ballet and uh, other art forms like that. And um, the reason it's interesting to point that out is because it's not really because that's biologically best for our body, but it's more um, a cultural aesthetic of what makes you look big and strong, maybe, or sturdy or open and presentable. So um, here's uh, something to, to talk about. So when we are, one of the reasons we, or, uh, we talk about lifting the chest, and one time, a lot of times we, we do that is because we are taught that it's kind of bad to hunch and slouch over, round the shoulders forward. But to an extent, you know, it's not the greatest thing if our head's in front of our shoulders, it's pulling our spine into hyperkyphosis or excessive rounding of the upper spine. But the problem is by lifting the chest and pushing the body, it, it's actually taking the whole rib cage and rotating it back. It's pushing the bottom ribs forward. And it looks a little bit like this. I like to use something like this half cylinder as an example. Is if you think of this curvature uh, in the uh, cylinder as uh, where uh, our upper spine is, where it has this, you know, our upper spine has this kind of rounding to it. When we're rounding forward, or if we have this, this curvature and our head's forward and our shoulders are forward a little bit, and then we say, okay, but straighten up. What we tend to do is just this. We rotate it backwards. But when you do that, I mean, with the cylinder, you can see this as an example. I didn't actually straighten anything. Like the, the curvature is still there. And all I've done is tilted it back. So that comes with a couple of problems or that uh, has some detrimental effects. One is because it doesn't actually fix the curvature of the spine as you rotate your rib cage back, it has a tendency to actually accentuate more of that curvature because what happens is, or one of the things that happens, maybe our head continues to fall further forward, the, the curvature continues to increase and we continue to lift the head or the chest and ribs up more and then the head keeps coming forward. So then if I were to keep this position and bring my ribs back down, I end up, well, oh, there's the actual curvature of my spine. Uh, the other thing that's going on is then we have this chronically habitually tight uh, and shortened lower back muscles. And it is actually also related to, well, I mean, and another issue which actually causes this is the um, hip flexors and the, specifically the psoas muscle. Because we sit so much, when we try to straighten our legs, the psoas, which attaches from the inner thigh all the way up into that lowest rib, if it doesn't have enough length to really straighten up anymore, it can kind of find its position by pulling the ribs forward and down. Uh, it just keeps it shorter that way. So, uh, for the best health of our body, for the best length in our spine, and for the best extension and movability of our hip flexors and our legs, we want to find out what is a neutral rib. Oh, also, I forgot to talk about even it's for core strength, too. Um, one more thing to just kind of uh, to illuminate. When a muscle is pulled really long, you know, to its longest length, it has a little bit less power a little less uh, ability to work, to, to hold, uh, to, um, I guess, to create the strength in the muscle. So that's the same with the biceps. If you try to pick something up, you know, from the fully extended bicep and you're trying to do a bicep curl, it's really hard. I mean, it's a lot harder to do it than if you already have some flexion going on. Same things going on in the core, like the attachments from your pubic bone or from yeah, from your pelvis to your bottom ribs. If the rib cage is tilted back, we're extending the, the core musculature so much that 
it's kind of harder for these muscles to turn on and support you. And so what do we do is we end up overusing our lower back. A quick, quick rundown of like a lot of different things that happens when we do this lifting the chest, pushing the ribs forward. So, okay, what are we going to do? Uh, to